Understanding the components that make up a great After Effects laptop is crucial in making sure that you spend the right money in the right place because there's a lot of laptops out there that seem like a good deal but are not exactly a great fit for the application of After Effects. So in this video, we're gonna walk through how to choose the best laptop based on the specs that you're considering for your After Effects laptop. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at is what Windows actually says about After Effects and which specs that you should be considering for your needs. Now, as you can see right on top there, it says we need an Intel or AMD quad core processor as a minimum, but then the recommended is an eight core or above for multi-frame rendering. Now, this basically means that the more cores you have in your CPU, the more that After Effects can take advantage of your computer's performance. This is saying that Windows 10 is the best recommendation, but let's look at the RAM, 16 gigs of RAM. Now that might sound crazy because a lot of people say, well, as soon as you add 16 gigs to a laptop, those laptops usually get predominantly more expensive. And this is true, but this is the minimum requirement that they recommend. And the reason being is After Effects uses a lot of RAM. And so having that 16 gig minimum will make sure that you do not have a laggy and poor experience in the program. Now the recommended is 32. That'll give you a lot more ceiling, be able to do a lot more inside of After Effects without slowing down your laptop. Now, lastly, we look at the GPU. They are recommending at least two gigs of GPU VRAM. Now, in my video where I recommend the best laptops for After Effects, which I'll link up at the end of this video, I do have some laptops in there that don't have dedicated GPUs because getting into the dedicated GPU, your price point automatically jumps to around $1,000. And so with that in mind, those laptops will be good for getting started, but not exactly good for pushing your After Effects work to the limit. Now they recommend four gigs of VRAM at a minimum, and that would be my recommendation as well. Something like the RTX 3050 be a good fit. Now as we move into the hard disk, you need at least 15 gigs free. I recommend a SSD, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Okay, now that we understand what Adobe is looking for, let's go ahead and talk about how to pick the right laptop based on these specifications. Now let's kick it off with the CPU. Now first and foremost, if you just need a little bit of After Effects work, maybe you're a graphic designer or you're a digital artist and you're like, you know, I don't do a lot of animation, but I'd like to use After Effects for a few little things here and there. And you'd be fine getting a laptop without a dedicated GPU, and most of those laptops come with U-series or G-series processors. Now for AMD, that's gonna be something like the 4700U, the 5700U, the 5800U, the new 6000 series when it comes out here in a couple of months, okay? Those are gonna be the laptops that you're gonna be looking for. On the Intel side, you wanna look for something like the i7-10710U or the i5-1135G7 or the 1165G7 or the 1185 or 95G7. Those will be good for some, you know, kind of dabbling in After Effects. However, if you're somebody who's gonna be taking After Effects very seriously, I would definitely recommend an H-series processor. So the H-series processors can look similar to the U-series or G-series processors in the spec sheet. Oftentimes, they have similar clock speeds that look almost the same. Now, the benefit of the H-series processor is that they can run at higher levels for a longer period of time. They're rated with a higher TDP. And this is really important because when it comes to the more mobile processors, the U-series and G-series processors, they can hit some of those peak frequencies, but they cannot reside there for a long time because they don't run at a high of a TDP. They run at a much lower TDP, which is great for battery life, but not great for continued performance inside of a program like After Effects. And so as you can see here on the lineup, the AMD CPUs as follows and the Intel CPUs as follows will be great for After Effects. Now, as mentioned in Adobe's recommended specifications, the more cores and threads you have, the more you'll be able to benefit from the multi-frame rendering inside of Adobe After Effects, which is what makes these higher core, higher thread count H series CPUs so advantageous in After Effects. 12th gen and Ryzen 6000, they've yet to be fully released, yet they've been announced. Should you wait? That is the real question. Now, a lot of times when we see a evolution of technology, we see about a 15 to 35% in growth performance. Now, what we see Intel promising from their desktop CPUs is almost 44% growth. Now, is that true? Uh, in certain circumstances, I'm sure it is, but I highly doubt in-app performance is gonna see a 44% bump. I'm anticipating a 25 to maybe 30% bump in performance. Could be right, could be wrong. So is it worth the wait? That really is up to you. If you need a laptop now, then no, it isn't because you're gonna lose out on what you need the laptop for waiting for the next gen to launch. But if you have a laptop and it's doing its job pretty well and you're just considering the upgrade, then yeah, sure. I would wait because then you can get that extra 25 to 30% performance when the new one launches. That's my two cents. I hope that helps.
Random access memory, or RAM, how does it work and what is the purpose of it and how much do you need? Well, according to Adobe, you need a minimum of 16 and a recommended of 32. Now, if you're new to the idea of RAM, let's talk about it real quickly. Every time you open up an application, it is going to pull away from your RAM. So if you open up a web browsing tab, you're gonna use anywhere from two to five gigs of RAM. If you have a lot of tabs open and you're watching videos on YouTube, and you're gonna end up with using a lot of RAM. So you could take easily five gigs of RAM just from working inside of Google Chrome. Then from there, let's say you open up After Effects. That's gonna use anywhere from six to 10 gigs of RAM, depending on the complexity of your project, at a minimum. And then let's say you wanna add in Photoshop, because you're having to do a little bit of editing in Photoshop for one of your assets inside of After Effects. Well, that's gonna use anywhere from two to four gigs of RAM. And so you can see how quickly RAM can add up and why Adobe recommends 32 gigs to make sure you have a good ceiling so you don't run out of RAM. Now, what about the GPU, the graphics processing unit? Adobe recommends four gigs of VRAM at a minimum, and that would definitely be my minimum starting point. That's gonna be something like the RTX 3050 or 3050 Ti. But if I were gonna make my own pick, I would start with at least the RTX 3060 with six gigs of VRAM, moving up to the RTX 3070 and then RTX 3080. Now, the more VRAM you have, the higher performance that you'll be able to accomplish inside of After Effects. It'll be a smoother experience, it'll be a faster experience, it'll be less waiting times. So if really optimizing your workflow is important, then you want more VRAM inside of your laptop. But really the question is, what does it do? It renders out the motion graphics and it also helps display multiple monitors. So if you're somebody using multiple monitors and you're trying to render heavy After Effects, I'd recommend at least the RTX 3070 if you can afford it in your budget because that would allow you to have good After Effects rendering and run multiple monitors smoothly. All right, now let's talk about storage. And this conversation is almost irrelevant because basically all laptops come with an SSD rather than an HDD. HDD is just older technology. So what we have here on an SSD is basically a block of memory, almost like a you know flash drive or an SD card, versus an HDD, which is a disc that spins, and then an I on an arm that reads that disc. So it's kind of a manual device versus a non-manual device versus more of a digital automated device. Now, how I explain this in a simple way that's been pretty effective for people in the past is think about if you need to look up a word in a dictionary. Let's say I wanna know what the word optimism means. So what I can do is if I have a dictionary on my bookshelf, if I'm in HDD, I would stand up, walk over to the bookshelf, search through the dictionary and find the word optimism and the definition that follows. If I were an SSD, I would pull out my cell phone, type in optimism definition, and then bam, there's my answer. So that's kind of the speed differences and how it's less manual searching, more kind of automated. Okay, I'm going to that point right there on the hard drive. I don't need to look for it on the spinning disk with the eye. I hope that helps. Now, as you can see on this chart, we have a variety of laptops that I've tested on my channel. Now, leading the pack would be the MacBook Pro series with the M1 Max and the M1 Pro. Now, these are both the 16 inch models. Now, the thing that throws off this whole system is the fact that Mac no longer uses dedicated GPUs because of their new SOC chip technology where they have all of that packed into their singular onboard SOC. But keep in mind that this does not necessarily translate into the original Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch M1. As you can see, this one's lower down on the charts. It doesn't benefit from a lot of those high GPU core and threads that they have in their newer chips. Now, when I say GPU, I don't mean dedicated GPU. I mean the GPU that they've built into their chip. So don't think that, okay, if I get a MacBook Pro M1, I'm gonna have all of this After Effects performance. It will still be good. It just isn't gonna be up near the top end of the charts and be the smoothest experience possible. But as we shift our focus towards more of the Windows laptops, you can see that the laptops with the higher end VRAM cards, something like the Asus Zephyrus G15, it has eight cores and 16 threads in the CPU, and it has six gigs of VRAM. Also inside of the Acer Predator Helios 300 there, we have an eight core 16 thread processor with an RTX 3070 GPU. And then as you see in the Razer Blade 15, we have an eight core 16 thread CPU with an RTX 3080 GPU. These laptops allow you to get a lot of good performance inside of After Effects. It's a sliding scale from laptops with CPUs with high cores and threads and dedicated GPUs with higher gigs for VRAM down to laptops with lower cores and threads and no dedicated GPUs. So if you're curious about the laptops that I recommend on that sliding scale, you can click or tap the screen here. But if you're also curious about color gamut range and the effects that it has on your work, click or tap the screen here and I'll see you in one of those videos.